I'm going to make a simple store or a shop inside of a game in Game Lab. So you might imagine playing Zelda and going in and buying some bombs or a boomerang from an old man. That's kind of what I have in mind. And to get things set up and to shorten the video a little bit, I went ahead and created my characters. Um, and I've made controls with the up, down, left, and right keys for my little robot. And then I created some items to buy. So you can buy a cow, uh, you can buy a watermelon, or you can buy an axe. And those three items, I don't really have any code. They don't move around. They're just placed where I want them to be. And then the only other thing I did as a setup was I went ahead and made a variable called cash and gave myself $500 to start. Everything else I'm going to do in this video. So I'll come down here. And um, the first thing I want to do is put on the screen how much cash that I have. So I'm going to grab a text block and a text size. And you want to do, anytime you put text on the screen, you want to do it below draw sprites so that any background sprites you create don't cover it up. So, um, I'm going to put this down here in the bottom right hand, so maybe at uh, 300 exposition and maybe 370 for a Y position. And I'll just test it out. Yeah, that'll work. I do want to make it bigger though. Okay, so remembering that my variable was called cash all lowercase letters. If I just write the word cash right here, uh, you might expect that it would give you the value of that variable, which was $500, 500. Um, but if I hit run, you'll just see the word cash. And the reason for that is because it's in quotation marks. So if I take the quotation marks off, then it will give me the variable value written there. But what I actually want is both. Um, so I'm going to write in quotes cash colon space and then close the quotes. And then outside of the quotes, I'm going to put plus lowercase cash. So I want it to actually say cash and then put the number next to it. So it's going to look like. Uh, it's too far off the screen, so I'm going to change my exposition. Let's try this. A little more. Okay, so that looks that was good to me. I really would like to have a dollar sign in there, so I'm going to sneak one in right here, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust my exposition because I'm afraid that's going to take it off the screen. Okay, so now that looks good. Uh, so my little guy walks around and we have a price on the screen. Now I need to code one of these and I think I'll do the watermelon first. So I want to say um, if is touching okay so if my robot character is touching the melon I'm going to make sure that I called it melon Okay, so if the robot is touching the melon, uh, then I want some more words to pop up on the screen. And this time, I'm going to put them closer to the center of the screen. And I'm going to say, press W to buy the watermelon for... Uh, let's say $50. Sounds like a good price. Let's check that that's working. I'm going to walk up here. Oh, my font is huge. Uh, okay. So let's put this text size at 20. Maybe it'll fit. Okay, we'll just scoot this over. Oh, that was the wrong one. This is the one I need to scoot over. Uh, 
All right, I'll take it. No, I won't. I'm going to scoot it over a little more. Okay, so enough watching me scoot text over. Uh, that looks pretty close to center. So now, uh, if they're touching, that's going to pop up. But pressing W doesn't actually do anything yet, so that's the next thing we need to code. Uh, so I only want this to be purchasable when they're touching, like when you go up to it. So I'm going to put this if inside the robot is touching if. So in this case, if the key went down W, then I'm going to uh, say cash equals cash minus the 50. So I'm going to subtract it from my value here. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to make the watermelon disappear. Uh, now, I've experimented with the visible false, and, well, let me just show you what happens. Uh, you can fast forward if you don't want to see it. Okay, watch this. So when I go up here, that part works. I press the W. The watermelon, the watermelon disappears, and my money is subtracted, which is good. But I'm still seeing this message. And notice if I walk away from it, it goes away. So that means it's still registering that I'm touching the watermelon, even though it's invisible. So this is not a good solution. What I'd like to do is buy it, and then this message goes away. So instead of saying the watermelon visible is false, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the watermelon and push it off the screen by giving it an x value that is way off the screen, impossible to find. So that'll look like this. Uh, press the W key, it buys it, and now it's gone. And if I continue to press W, nothing's happening because the watermelon isn't here anymore. He's way over here somewhere off screen. And that's basically how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and do the cow, uh, but I think if you've seen one, you can figure out the others. I'm gonna take all of this, which is the entire melon uh, code. I'm going to copy and paste it. And this time I'm going to change everything to the cow. Press C to buy the cow. He should be more valuable. I'll make him uh, $100. But I do want the message to be in the same location. I need to change this one to C. I need to change this one to 100 and once again, I want to move the cow off the screen after the purchase. All right, so let's see. Watermelon still works. This time I'm going to press C, and hopefully this will go down to 350. Okay. And so now we need to do the axe. And I'm, and I'm going through the process of doing all three because I want to show you an issue that comes up. Uh, I'm going to copy all of my cow code, control C. And then control V to paste it. And uh, this time I'm going to do X. Oh, I just noticed that this still says watermelon. So what happens if I make the price of the X $351? And I don't know if you remember what's significant about that number, but we'll look at it again. Okay, so we go and we buy a watermelon, no problem. We go and we buy a cow, no problem. Ah, but look, now if I go to the axe, the axe costs $351, and I only have $350. So I think you know what's going to happen, which you probably don't want to happen. I'm going to go ahead and press A. What I do, ooh, that is not what I expect. Oh, look, I didn't change it. Well, that was uh, not great of me. Let me try again. Skip the dramatic buildup. You know what's coming. All right, now this axe costs $351, and I only have $350. So when I hit A, I get a value of negative 1. And that's no good. You don't want to be able to spend more money than you actually have. So we need to do something about that. Okay, so we need another if. Uh, and we'll just do the X first. 
we want to say, I'll stick it here for now. Um, if cash is greater than 351, then check if they press the key, give them the money. If, if, uh, and it should be greater than or equal to because it's okay for them to spend all their money and be left with zero. You just don't want them to be left with nothing. All right, so if cash is greater than or equal to 351, then allow them to make the purchase. And we only want this to even be an issue uh, when they're on top of the X. So let's check that. Buy a watermelon, buy a cow. And here we're ready to buy an axe, but we don't have enough money. I'm going to press A, nothing happens. I cannot buy it. Of course, we'd have to go and uh, make those same uh, corrections for the other items as well. So uh, I'll just stick it below to start. If cash is greater than or equal to, in this case, 100, making sure I have $100 before I can buy a cow then move the key check inside of it and put it back inside on the cow. We'll do it one more time. Stick it here for now. If cash is greater than or equal to 50, then we're gonna check for the key press. We'll stick that inside the melon. So let's do them in a different order. Let's buy the ax first. Let's buy the watermelon next. Now I don't have enough money for the cow, so when I press C, it's not going to allow that purchase. And that's the beginnings of making a shop. Now, um, when you're making your own game and you buy items, you would hope that they would give you something, like a new outfit or a new ability. I'll leave that part to you.